Hi everyone. In last lecture, I introduced you to a law which is called dilution law, and this video is just a continuation of that. So there are two particular cases which which we need to know in case of dilution law. So it may happen that I am mixing two solutions and I want to know the resultant molarity of the solution. So I'm talking about those two cases pertaining to mixture of two solutions. So when we mix two solution, there can be case one in which there is only and basically in these types of questions uh, we will be seeing mainly in case when two acids are mixed or two bases are mixed or an acid or a base are mixed. Okay, so case one include acid solution plus acid solution or base basic solution plus basic solution. Okay, so two different like same uh, substance we are mixing together and I want to know the molarity of the resultant solution. That time what we need to do is the resultant molarity will be equal to M1 V1 that is the molarity of the first solution into the volume of the first solution plus M2 V2 upon V1 plus V2. This is the formula that we are going to follow in this particular case one when both of them are acids or both of them are our base. Now in case two what can happen? In case two we are taking an acid plus base plus base. Now here let's say if if it is the acid or the base both are the gram equivalent if the gram equivalent of the acid is equal to the gram equivalent of base then it is complete neutralization okay so there will be no h plus or oh minus left in the solution whose molarity i can find out everything will be consumed and it will be forming water and salt but if the gram equivalent of the acid and the base is not equal then there is a way to find out the molarity and what is that the resultant molarity will be equal to m1 v1 minus m2 v2 upon v1 plus v2 so which one should be our m1 v1 m1 v1 should be the one which is more in quantity M1 V1 it can be either acid also or base also how do we choose that M1 uh, M1 V1 whoever who's ever millimoles millimoles or moles are higher that will be M1 V1 that will be M1 V1 and also that means what that particular solution suppose acid is more acid concentration is more than that of base so all of the base will take up the acid that is there and neutralize and what will be left in the solution acid will be left so whatever molarity we are finding out that is the molarity of what basically of the acid that is left with us okay now if this m1 v1 and m2 v2 is same that means gram equivalent of acid is equal to the gram equivalent of base we can easily see that the concentration is getting zero okay now if the m1 v1 of acid is greater than that of m1 v1 of base then definitely the resultant solution will be acidic acidic and if m1 v1 of base is greater than that of m so this one will be m1 v1 another one will be m2 v2 okay just for uh, it will be con confusing if we bo take both as one so if m1 v1 of base let's say is greater than m2 v2 of acid then the resultant solution will be basic why base will be left in the solution so here h plus concentration we will be finding out what concentration mr 
and here we are found finding out basically the OH minus concentration. So these are the two cases of dilution that we are seeing here. Now we will be doing questions uh, pertaining to that. Let's say we will do this question only we will do. Yes. 29 points. So this is this is a question from JE Advanced 2012. So 29.2% weight by weight HCl uh, stock solution has a density of okay. Before starting this question, we need to know something very, very important. That is, there are certain relations between the concentration term. Let's go and uh, write down the relation between the concentration then terms. Then we will come on, come on to this question. So write down relations between concentration terms. First relation is percentage weight by volume is equal to percentage weight by weight into density. This is the first formula. Second formula is molarity the relation between molarity and percentage weight by weight so molarity is equal to 10 into percentage weight by weight into density upon molecular mass of solute molecular mass of solute so this is the relation between molarity and percentage weight upon weight now just now we saw that Percentage weight upon weight into density is nothing but percentage weight upon volume. So molarity is equal to 10 into percentage weight upon volume upon molecular mass of solute. Both are correct. The next relation is between molality and molarity. So small m is denoted with small, small m denotes uh, molality. So molality is equal to 1000 into molarity upon 1000 into density minus molarity into molecular mass of solute. This is the relation between molality and molarity. Okay. Coming on to the next relation. Very important. Relation between molality and mole fraction. So molality is equal to mole fraction of solute. This is what? This is chi into 1000 divided by mole fraction of solvent into molecular mass of solvent. Now suppose only mole fraction of solute is given you can easily find out by replacing this by 1 minus mole fraction of solute this also you can replace right so these are all the few important uh, relations between the concentration terms we should know before starting with uh, with the numericals because this will be given okay but conversions can be given and with this formulas it will get much much more easier now quickly we will just see an example for this and then we will go forward with that question j advanced question now for example let's say we will do with this equation only the last one find mole fraction find mole fraction of solute in one molar aqueous solution 1 molal aqueous solution. So what should we do? 1 molal aqueous solution is given and they are telling us to find out mole fraction. Just we will put it in the formula. So 1 is equal to chi solute into 1000 divided by 1 minus chi solute into as it is an aqueous solution. So definitely the molecular mass of solvent. Solvent is here H, H2O. So it will be 18. Now let's solve this. How much it will be? Uh, so it will be around 18 minus 18. 
chi s is equal to chi s into 1000. So, 18 chi s plus 1000 chi s is equal to 18. So, chi of solute will be equal to 18 divided by 1018. Okay. So, this will be the mole fraction of one molar aqueous solution. This is the correct answer. Now, let's, let's move on into the next question. That question, J advanced question. So, they are telling that we have a HCl stock solution. Now, what do we mean by stock solution? It is nothing but, uh, for example, when um, we have guests at home, have you seen your uh, parent, uh, your mother is making a stock solution of uh, orange juice? It is very concentrated. Okay, it is very concentrated. And while serving, what she does, she takes this a little amount of this stock solution and mix it with water and gives it to the guest. So this is our stock solution. The concentrated solution that is already made, that is our stock solution. And from here, little of the amount, let's say 10 ml I am taking and mixing it with 100 ml and serving to our guests. Okay. So this is our stock solution. And from the stock, I am making a diluted version. Okay, so this is called as stock solution. Now, so they have told that 29.2% weight upon weight, HCl stock solution has a density of 1.25 gram per ml. Okay, first things first, we have to find out the molarity of this stock solution. This stock solution has some molarity, right? But they have given the percentage weight by weight. Now see, why have I given you certain equations? You can see the relation between molarity and percentage weight by weight from here. So we will apply that formula here. Molarity is equal to 10 into percentage weight by weight that is 29.2 into density is given as 1.25 divided by molecular mass of the solute that means HCl. HCl molecular mass is 36.5. Now when you multiply this you will get it as 365 upon 36.5 that will be around 10 molar. So the stock solution that is given to us has a molarity of 10 molar. Now what do I have to do? The volume of stock solution. Now they are asking the how much amount of this stock solution, how much amount of that orange juice I should take out in order to make 200, in order to make 200 ml solution of 0.4 molar. Okay. So now I will apply M1V1 is equal to M2V2 because moles will be same only, right? The moles of the uh, solute will be same in both of them. Now, M1 is our 10 molar into V1. This V1 only we need to find out how much volume I should take in order to make this particular solution. Which solution? 200 ml of which what concentration? 0.4 molar. So, here we will put 0.4 into 200. So, V1 will be how much? 0.4 into 200 divided by 10. That will give you a value of 8. 8 ml. So, that means I should take up 8 ml of this stock solution and I have to make it up to 200. I have to make it up to 200 ml in order to make the concentration as 0.4 molar. I hope you have understood this particular uh, problem. Right. Coming on to the next question. That is a compound H2X. Now this also has come in J advanced 2014. A compound H2X with molar weight of 80 grams is dissolved in a solvent having density of 0.4 gram per ml. Okay. Assuming no change in volume. Now see this is a very crucial statement. There is no change in volume means there will be no change in concentration as well. 
because moles will anyway no, anyway not change okay so that means they are asking what they have given molarity and they are simply asking molality so which formula should we use m is equal to 1000 into molarity upon 1000 into d minus molarity into molecular mass of solute using this formula we will be easily able to calculate the molarity directly so put the values 1000 into 3.2 divided by 1000 into 0.4 minus 3.2 into 80 so that will be around 3200 divided by 400 minus 32 into 8 is ha huh, 250 6 so we will get around 3200 upon 144 so that is around 22.22 molal so that's what they have asked so it is not that easy see in j advance these kinds of questions have come in which involves direct formula based questions okay so i hope you have understood the application of this particular formulas and the questions now coming on to the next uh, question this is very easy a 5 molar solution of h2so4 is diluted from 1 liter to a volume of 10 liters so that means m1 v1 is equal to m2 v2 okay m2 v2 now what we are doing 5 into 1 that is equal to m2 the new molarity i need to find out it has been diluted to 10 liters now so m2 will be equal to 5 into 1 upon 10 that is 0.5 now this is our molarity what they are asking normality of the solution now we all know normality one formula we have seen that is equal to molarity into n factor and what is the n factor of h2so4 that is nothing but 2 when nothing is given we should take the highest one so normality will be equal to molarity molarity into 2 so that is 0.5 into 2 it will be 1 normal this is in molar this is the easiest question that is there now now uh, we did certain case 1 and case 2 mixture of solutions right so these kinds of questions will be generally seen in acid base reactions or titrations more to be more precise so how the question will come is let's say they will give how much how much volume of i'm just making a question right away how much volume of 0.2 molar h2so4 is required to completely neutralize to completely neutralize let's say 0.1 molar uh, eight, uh, not hcl naoh this is the question so what we will do here is we know that for complete neutralization the gram equivalent the gram equivalent of acid should be equal to the gram equivalent of base so the gram equivalent of acid is equal to the gram equivalent of base okay so that time what will happen so we can say that m m a into v a into n factor of a should be equal to m b into v b into n factor of b where a is our acid and b is our base so from here what is the molarity of the acid given 0.2 va i need to calculate because volume how much volume of acid i should uh, require that only they are asking so volume i have to find out what will be the n factor of this particular acid again it will be 2 just now we we saw it and molarity of the base is given as 0.1 and okay here volume i didn't mention neutralize let's say 500 ml of 
0.1 molar NaOH. So here I will put 500. And what is the N factor of NaOH? It is nothing but 1. So from here VA will be equal to 0.1 into 500 into 1 divided by 0.2 into 2. So it will be 50 upon 0.4. Okay. So it will be 500 upon 4. This will be the volume that will be required. This is in ml. So this much amount of volume of the acid will be required in order to neutralize completely 500 ml of 0.1 molar NOH. This is one type of question from those two cases. And another question will be direct that uh, you have been given let's say 200 ml of 0.2 molar NaOH and this has been mixed with 400 or let's say 300. Let's make it 300. 300 ml of 0.1 molar HCl. Okay. So now what is the resultant molarity? This is the question. So what you will do first is first you will find out millimoles. How will you find millimoles? Molarity into volume in ml. That will give you the answer in millimoles. So what will be it? It will be for NaOH. It will be 0 0.2 into 200. Okay. So what will be the answer to this? 40. 40 millimoles. And if we find out this, this is for NaOH. And if I find out the same thing for HCl, what it will be? 0 0.1 into 300 millimoles that is 30 millimoles so which one is in excess now definitely the base is in excess so resultant molarity will be 40 minus 30 divided by 500 by 500 because v1 plus v2 so it will be 10 upon 500 that is nothing but 1 upon 50 1 upon 50 molar will be our solution, uh, solution strength after we mix this two. Which solution? OH minus strength basically. Who is left in excess? NaOH. And the nature of the solution will be definitely basic. Okay. I hope you have understood this entire dilution law. Coming on to our next topic and the last topic of the chapter is volumetric volumetric strength of H2O2 volumetric strength of H2O2 now generally when we see a bottle of hydrogen peroxide or uh, inside the uh, like on the top of the bottle on the label there is certain things written like 10 V 20 V 30 V so definitely we can understand the, the, it is it has something to do with the concentration but it is a different kind of exp uh, way of expressing the concentration of H2O2. So this is another type of concentration only right. Let's try to understand this. H2O2 like basically the concentration of H2O2 is measured in terms of how much oxygen it is liberating. Okay so when we heat it we get 2H2O plus O2. Now, from this equation, I can say that 1 mole of O2 is given by, is given by 2 moles of H2O2, 2 moles of H2O2. So, I can say 20, 1 mole of O2 is equivalent to 22.4 liters of O2. So, 22.4 liters of O2 is given by basically 2 moles of H2O2. Now, 1 liter, 1 liter of O2 is given by how much moles of H2O2? 2 upon 22.4 moles of H2O2. Now, if I say X liters of O2. Now, this X, why did I take X? Suppose I have 
first claim that this is x volume H2O2. Okay, x volume H2O2. That means V means volume strength, the concentration of H2O2. So x liters of O2 is given by 2 upon 22.4 into x moles of H2O2. Okay, so when we cancel it, it will become 11 x upon 11.2 moles of H2O2. So when I say x volume, it means that one mole, one mole of H2O2 is liberating x ml, x liters, x liters of O2. That is the meaning of this x volume. So now let's try to find out molarity. Molarity will be equal to number of moles of H2O2 upon volume of H2O2. Now, I just now told you X volume means 1 liter H2O2 giving, giving X liters of O2. Okay, so X liters of O2 is given by how much moles? This many moles. So we'll place the value x upon 11.2 divided by how many how many uh, liters is there? One liter of H2O2. So it will be x upon 11.2. So ultimately, the volume strength is given by the formula 11.2 into molarity. This is the formula that we are getting. Now, let's analyze it a little more. You can see if the molarity is 1 of H2O2, then X is equal to 11.2 volume. Right? So, I can have a number of variations, number of uh, relations rather. I can say 11.2 volume of H2O2 is equivalent to is equivalent to 1 molar H2O2. That is also, this is very, very important. If you know this relations, you don't need to put your so much of thoughts into this calculation that I have done so far. This is just for your understanding, more in-depth understanding. But uh, if you want to solve questions, this part, whatever I'm giving now, that will be enough. So 11.2 volume of H2O2 is equivalent to one molar of one molar H2O2. That is equivalent to two normal H2O2. Why? Because the n factor of H2O2 is two. That is also equivalent to 3.4 weight upon volume percent of H2O2. That is also equivalent to 3.4 grams of H2O2 in 100 ml of the solution. That is also equivalent to 34 grams of H2O2 in 1000 ml of solution. These are all the relations that you need to remember and using all these relations, all the numericals will be done. Another important thing that is, the question is asked is, volume of O2 liberated by the decomposition of, decomposition of H2O2. They will ask. So what is the formula for that? Physical quantity. That means the amount of volume of H2O2 they have given. Physical quantity of H2O2 in ml milliliter into volume strength of H2O2. So for example, if they say they have given 10 ml of 25 volume H2O2 and they are asking how much of O2 will be liberated by this particular 
सब्सटेंस ऑफ एच टू ओ टू सो इट विल बी नथिंग बट टेन इंटू ट्वेंटी फाइव दैट विल बी टू फिफ्टी एम एल टू फिफ्टी एम एल ऑफ ओ टू विल बी लिबरेटेड वेन टेन एम एल ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव वॉल्यूम एच टू ओ टू इज डिकम्पोज सिंपल एंड वट आर द अदर टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन दैट कैन कम फ्रॉम दिस रिलेशन लेट से दे आर आस्किंग फाइंड परसेंटेज वेट बाई वेट ऑफ फाइव पॉइंट सिक्स वॉल्यूम H2O2 density टू डेंसिटी दे हैव गिवेन एस वन ग्राम पर एम एल नाउ फ्रॉम द रिलेशन अब वेर आर द रिलेशन सी हियर परसेंटेज वेट बाय वॉल्यूम इज इक्वल टू परसेंटेज वेट बाय वेट इन टू डेंसिटी इलेवन पॉइंट टू वॉल्यूम एच टू ओ टू इज इक्वीवेंट टू इज इक्वीवेंट टू हाउ मच How much weight by volume percent? Three point weight by volume percent. So five point six volume H two O two will be equivalent to three point four divided by eleven point two into five point six. This will get cancelled. That is equal to one point seven weight by volume percent. now from the relations we have seen that percentage weight by weight is equal to percentage weight by volume upon density and as because here density is one this will be same percentage weight by weight in is will be equal to percentage weight by volume so this is only equal to 1.7 weight by weight percentage so these kinds of uh, relation questions will come okay so you can just use unitary method to solve these kinds of questions and when they ask about volume of o2 liberated you can just simply use this formula to find out the amount of o2 that is liberated so with this we have come to the end of this chapter i hope you have understood all the concepts i'll be uploading the assignments soon so see you in the next chapter then thank you so much have a great day